Radio Show. I'm your host, Cindy Palos, with my friends. This is like a home gathering here. Kathy Takushi from Captivating Journeys. Always good to see you, Kathy. How are you? I'm good. And you? And Christine Wong's back. Hi. Oh, Just for miss, a short time. I miss everybody. <laughs> She's kind of like lives her life touch and go. You know, yeah. her life is kind of like one of those touch and goes you do when you're going on the airplane. You just touch base and you take off again and touch base and take off. I, you know, it's like you're here for a week and then you're gone. And it's just so fun. It, it's get, packing, unpacking. Yes. <laughs> Don't you get tired, though? Of, I mean... Of, I kind of do. Of packing and unpacking? Yeah, or just, <laughs> well, flying. Flying's the hard part. Mm, yeah, sometimes. Uh-huh. But but mm, she's 1K, see? I know, but. And she gets those, but she makes sure she gets the best seats. I know, and she knows how to hard. do that. It, yeah. I, I, luckily, I'm very blessed. I can sleep on the airplane, and I yep. think that's key. Uh, if I start reading the magazine, or watching the movie, <laughs> I'll yeah. fall asleep. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. That is a blessing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of weather and earth situations going on with the news and plane situations. Just to cover a little of the news, of course, right now they're going through a lot on the East Coast. There were a lot of uh, cancellations once again with the storms that were happening there. They were getting some heavy-duty weather. Um, also, co-pilot, a co-pilot was sucked halfway out of a plane after the windshield cracked over China at 32,000 feet. This happened yesterday, and it was on Sichuan Airlines. And again, um, they were lucky the pilot this time um, was able to be pulled back in, and he survived it. I mean, he got sucked halfway out of the plane. The window cracked, and it was like a nightmare, right? And meanwhile, the other pilot was just doing his best to help and and what happened is the plane started going down you know because it was depressurized Um, but then they pulled the pilot back in and um, then after it went down a little bit they stabilized it and they landed and um, they brought the pilot in and he survived you know they said the windshield just cracked and made a loud bang and he said the co-pilot said next thing I know my co-pilot had been sucked halfway out the window so the guy pulled the co-pilot in while flying, and uh, the co-pilot only suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Can you imagine that? So he survived. But um, that was the news yesterday. Um, of course, there's news ongoing with what's happening right here in Hawaii. And, um, of course, the now they're watching some of the planes um, going over the Big Island because there's been more activity they just did another update just a few minutes ago about more ash coming up. And um, yesterday, of course, um, there was another explosion. And with that explosion, um, it it got up to 12,000 feet from uh, the main crater. And so, uh, again, they're, they're watching that, and there's been more going on. So this is, of course, impacting tourism. Um, Which it shouldn't. It shouldn't, um, and or, you know, here's the thing. We've been discussing this all morning at the station um, because it is 10 miles where all this is happening, but the crater is more. The crater does affect more. Mm -hmm. And they did a story on the news last night, and they were doing the story from Kona saying how it's terrible that some of the businesses are down 30% and Norwegian Cruise Lines didn't go in. They they canceled the last trip. because of concerns, but the problem was they did this whole story while saying everything was fine, and all you could see in the background was this very heavy fog. It looked like Be- Beijing. And I was just thinking, if you really want to do a story about how everything's fine in the rest of the island, you've got to get a background that doesn't look like you can't breathe. Mm-hmm. And and many people are saying that it is bad air quality, even on the Kona side. It depends on the winds, right? And I really feel for the islands. I mean, you know how we de- you know more than anyone how we depend on tourism. Mm-hmm. What would you do as a as a travel agent with Captivating Journeys if someone called you and maybe they already have, and said, "Well, we were going to go to the Big Island. Should we go or shouldn't we go?" It's a hard question. We had that question for somebody on a cruise line for December today, mm-hmm. just today. Seriously, so. for <laughs> December, for December. Whoa! So. You know, it's a long ways off. Yeah. So, you know, wait and see because mm-hmm. who knows, right? For immediate clients, um, if they're going to Kona, maybe I wouldn't suggest Hilo. I mean, Hilo is a cute little town, but I, I wouldn't. 
it, the airlines are, you know, giving waivers, United, Delta, for going to the Big Island. But um, maybe they're just su- suggesting going, spending time on the other islands. If I think that you'd almost have to do that, and you'd almost have to know your client. In other words, mm-hmm. if your client has asthma or right. or breathing problems or if they're elderly or they've had, like, history of pneumonia or something, then I would say... You want to be careful mm-hmm. uh, and maybe avoid the big island. I don't think any of the other islands would be anything you'd have to worry about. I mean, I think we've all experienced people who we know um, who live um, around the rest of the world and on the mainland who still don't realize we are not having the volcano happen mm-hmm. here on Maui. So then we have to wonder if they don't even know after knowing we're, we're in Hawaii and they should know we're in Maui, but they don't know the difference really. Um that there are probably some people thinking of not coming because they don't know the difference to, even between the islands or where it's happening. True. Yeah. yeah so geographically, I, I think really it's very confusing. Now, when you say the state of Hawaii, Hawaii, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then you have the island yeah. of Hawaii. Right. So Keep. it's very confusing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is confusing. And most people, I found, people even I know that are friends, a lot of them do not know the difference. Now, if you've been to Maui before, you know the difference, right, mm-hmm. if you've visited here. But I guess for all those who haven't, it's, and I mean, I guess I wouldn't know the difference between if someone lived in New York, if what province, what county they were from. I wouldn't necessarily know what where they are in relation to some, you know, accident that might happen or some terrible weather that might happen or something. So I guess I can understand it, but... I think the tourism industry is going to have to really do some serious um, promotion to try to get the message out that, you know, it's okay to come to Hawaii because there was, right before, of course, this volcanic explosion. There was Kauai. There was Kauai. And Mm then, and I hate to say it, we can't control the weather, but this happened to be a rather rainy, (laughs) rainy winter, right, for anyone and a lot of business comes with the wedding industry Mm -hmm. and if someone is going to have a wedding on the beach and something happens and it rains on them you know they're going to be posting to all their friends and looking at it and if it's raining on their wedding it's not good thing Mm. so this is something i think that there's going to have to be some concerted effort to rebuild um hawaii's image made i mean this happens to a lot of places remember when there was that gulf oil spill and and tourism and everything went down along those regions all the way along from oh, Florida. Right. Remember that whole yeah. thing? And the the British was it British Petroleum um, had that thing. They they spent a ton of money mm-hmm. again re encouraging people to come and that they're fine, they're open for business. And I think that our tourism industry is gonna really have to do some concerted efforts to let people know what's going on that it is okay. I just got just a few minutes ago, um, an update from the Hawaii Visitors Bureau, too. And okay, what it say? So they're just saying, um, many of you are seeing the news about the volcano and um, what you need to know. There is absolutely no reason for, at this time for travelers to change or alternate their leisure or business plans and talks about the location and, and whatnot. So mm-hmm. they are, and most of this will usually go out um, to... Other travel agents, you know, that belong to the Visitors Association and different um, um, venues for that. So they are they are sending out things to whoever it may be. So yeah, and yeah. and but the thing is, for it needs to get out to the country. Yeah, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't help to that, right? You know, but it needs to get out with major campaigns. And maybe TV ads and things such as that. I'm you know, sure they will. They're probably, because, I'm yeah. sure they, they, they're, they're pretty good at that. And, and, you know, and I would imagine, you know, for people trying to save business on the Big Island, I mean, I think probably would help to have a list of things people can do that have nothing to do with going up to the volcano because that may be closed for a while, you know. Um, but, you know, you can still go over the stingrays and you can go out on the boats and you have the pools and there's lots of um you know other lovely things to do it Um, does say that here it says all accommodations and activities and attraction on the island are 
operating normally with exception of those in the area affected by the lava activity. So, Well, the, the park, Volcanoes Park, was closed mm-hmm. yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So you couldn't go up there. Now, I've heard it, it's changing. It, it, they change it daily depending on yeah. what's going on, right? Yeah. Because they had that big explosion yesterday. It went up 12,000 feet. So, and there were, in the recent ones that happened today, there were two-foot rocks being kicked out. Um, close enough where if you were in the Volcano Park, you wouldn't want to be around there. So, but but it doesn't have to just be going there if you're going, you know, just like saying if you're going to Wailea, you know, uh, you might not be going up to the top of Haleakala if that was going up. You'd still be doing other things mm-hmm. in the area. So there's uh, there are alternatives. Um, it's just that we're seeing so much coverage on the news because it is, I mean, the, the footage is mind-blowing when you mm-hmm. see it. You know, you see those explosions and you see the lava and you see the... The homes and everything. So, I mean, I think the amazing story for me in that whole story is that how people are helping each other out. Well, I I don't want to be negative. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> However, I, Fred and I were on the big island, oh, I don't know how many years ago when they had that earthquake. It was on a Sunday morning, and it was about 6 a.m., and, well, see, Garrett was in college, so it must have been at least... 10 years mm-hmm. ago and it, it that's when Ma, um, the Mauna Kea Hotel had cracks and they couldn't use the elevator we were staying at the Hapuna Prince we were and because it was so early early morning so we were in bed the TV came crashing out of the that little stand you know that yeah yeah it, it fell to the ground in the bathroom, the light fixtures crashed to the ground. Really? Yes. And, and and there was absolutely no warning. And it was shaking. And all I remember was, well, Garrett is fine. You know, he's he's got a great education. You know, he'll be well taken care of. And, <laughs> and if they find us, at least Fred and I will be found together. You know, hmm. in in this hotel room. Was that part of an of uh, an explosion that was going on? At the no, time? it was an earthquake. Was big one? Big, it was a, yeah. It was what eight? Some it was. It huge. couldn't have been eight. That's the one they they closed the backside of um, Kaupo that closed the road for yes. a long time. Oh, right? really? That one yes. Oh. Quite a few and, years ago. And we luckily we were there for a convention and we had played golf the day before and we did not put our golf bags in storage like other people did. So luckily, we grabbed our luggage, our golf bag. We got out of the room. There was water everywhere. The pipes had broken. We walked, and, you know, everybody had to evacuate. So we met outside the hotel in a grassy area. And luckily, because we had our golf bag, we got into our car as soon as we could get our car and drove to the airport and we got out just in time. Wow. Be- because after that, it, it was chaos because people couldn't get to work and, and you know, we, we you know, because... I've we, never heard that story before from you. I didn't know you had gone through that. Yes. That interesting. And, and Garrett had Did they called. give you your money back for the stay? No, no, no. Because no. <laughs> we were checking out. It was you were Sunday. checking out anyways. Right? And... and <laughs> And it was fortunate that it was so early Sunday morning that was there very little traffic mm-hmm. on the road. And so that way, you know, construction people mm-hmm. weren't on the roofs because, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're yeah. building all around. And I was thinking, if that was a weekday, there would have been people falling off of buildings. Well, and strangely enough, that big earthquake, uh, of course, it's hard to really know all the damage because it's all happening once. But the 6.9, I don't think they had that much damage there. When the 6.9 happened. But that would have probably been less than what you said that happened before. But, you know, here, you know, we are living (laughs) in the volcanic islands. And so a little of this is like, well, you know, Mother Nature isn't always going to be caring about our our plans here. Uh, You know, that these things can happen. And so I really just hope and pray that people do continue to come and that people don't stop. Because, I mean... Tourism is the backbone, really, truly, of a, of a lot of people's foundation and work. And not only the hotels, it's all the 
um, restaurants, I mean, all the different businesses, the car rental places, um, the impact is really huge. I mean, I was talking with your friends, actually, you know, from the hotel and uh, visitor B- industry bureau, I was talking to Lisa um, a couple oh, weeks ago, Lisa uh-huh. Paulson. You know mm-hmm. Lisa, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And she was telling me how much um, money's made in taxes um, through the Maui hotels and lodgings. It's something like 40% of our of the state's taxes come from wow. that yeah industry. So, I mean, it, it's huge. That's in property taxes and things. Mm-hmm. So, and and congratulations to them. They just raised one point four million dollars on that walk they did last Yay. Saturday for nonprofits. Yeah. So you know, tourism is important. We hope that people do continue to come, of course, and with the guidance of your travel agent. That's what, if they trust you, and they do because you live here, they can follow the advice of a travel agent. There's a lot of people who are traveling independently and they don't know the difference, you know, mm-hmm. and that's where a travel agent can really help them out, you know. Um, well, you know, that's why I, I said I didn't want to be negative, but because being there when that earthquake hit, for me, if someone were to ask me right now, right now, I would just say, wait, because something can really happen. I mean, mm-hmm. there can be, you know, an, an eruption, you know, with who knows. Um, well, they expect where, an eruption. Yeah. That's almost given. Yeah. So I, I think that you don't want to be there if they have to shut down airports, if they have to shut down roads. Y- y- you know, you just don't know. And, and I think that perhaps come to Hawaii, and like Kathy was saying, for United... I noticed today, because um, prior to this, they said, oh, you can change the date, but it had to be the same itinerary. Mm -hmm. Now they have put another waiver um, where you can change the itinerary. So, you know, instead of San Francisco to Kona or Hilo, you can change and maybe come to Maui or go Mm -hmm. to Kauai or Oahu. Mm -hmm. So that's something new they just added, where before you still had to keep that you know same itinerary Mm -hmm. so now you have the opportunity to change to a different island you just will have to pay whatever the change fee and well it's great to be able to be flexible like that too Mm -hmm. and again if you have someone you trust as your travel agent they can guide you through that and and doing that and make that happen you know um Panic never works. No. <laughs> you know? If anyone's going to ever panic, that, that never, ever, ever works anywhere. And the, and the poor Hawaii Island, well, after that earthquake, there was a lot of damage. And their tourism took a big loss then. And they, it took them a while to come back. And then now this. So that poor island and tourism is. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's tough. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little. First, I'm going to let you talk, Kathy, about any kind of deals. Because um, we want to talk, I guess, about Paul Gauguin and other things going on. Um, is there any special deals with other? I still have questions. I have friends that still want to go on the Paul Gauguin who've never been to Tahiti. They should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, they still have dates uh, up through the end of the year for the Hawaii resident special. So you can take a look at that um, on our website at captivatingjourneys.com or or call the office and we can send you information. Um, two four four fourteen fourteen, and um, that really is the best deal out there. Mm-hmm. And um, and Japan, Japan, very popular still. There was that deal on Hawaiian Airlines. Did you see it? Five hundred and seventy, five hundred and seventy something mm-hmm. dollars to go to Osaka. Yes. I think you have to uh, buy it by this week or. But travel by the end of the month. I'm sure they're going to extend that. That's, that's a very yeah. good deal. Yeah. Very, very good deal. Everybody loves Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Christine's adventures, the uh, continuing adventure of Christine Wong, <laughs> who loves to travel. And um, you you just came back, well, about two weeks ago, you came back. From going to the Caribbean. Yes. On Celebrity Silhouette? Silhouette. Mm -hmm. Correct. And that was a rather quick trip. But you don't usually do long trips to the Caribbean. Yeah, it's just a seven day and leaving out of Fort Lauderdale round trip. And you go to Key West and um, 
Cozumel and Grand Cayman and Puerto. One more place. Anyway, did uh, you did you like? Uh, what was I mean? Everyone's heard of the Grand Caymans because of their financial situation, what they can offer financially. What did you think of the Grand Cayman? Yes, I I love the Grand Cayman and. I always do the same shore excursion, oh, yeah? which is you go out on a boat, catamaran or sailboat, and you swim with the stingrays. Mm-hmm. And it's what I love about it is that you go out to a sandbar. So you get off the ship and then you get into a you know van and maybe 20 minutes away. And there's different boats you can go on. And and I chose this um, catamaran. And it was wonderful because there are maybe, what, 25 of us? Mm -hmm. Instead of a very large Mm -hmm. boat, you know, where they could be like 100 people. So so you go out maybe, I don't know, a couple miles. And you go to the sandbar in the middle of the ocean. And you go into the water, so you're just about chest high. And standing on the sandbar. Stand, st- yes, standing on the sandbar. And you, the guide is very good. He'll say, okay, no um, shoes or, you know, those water, water sandals, yeah, barefoot. And they tell you how to walk because you don't want to be stepping on a stingray. And no, I don't think it'd be. I would, uh, I would not like to step on a stingray. Yeah. No, However, no. <laughs> the the experience of that is is just amazing because they are coming out from the wild. Mm-hmm. They can come and play with the tourists if they want, and the guide is holding the stingray, and he'll put it on your chest or on your back, and and. It's incredible, and the stingrays—they're—they're they're really tame because they know, they know the guide. They feed them. You yeah. can feed them, and they—they they tell you, you know, how to feed them, and you know, you kind of put your thumb away, and and like you'd feed a horse. Oh, open. I, I don't know how to feed a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, and and it was just amazing. Yeah. And they're free. They're free to come, free to go. If they want to play with tourists, they come. If they don't, they don't come. And I mean, they did this when we were in, in Tahiti. Tahiti. Yes. Bora Bora. The same thing. Yeah. Yes, Bora Bora. It's smaller, though. The stingrays are a lot smaller. Oh, were they? Yes. Oh. Because even Shirley, Shirley said, oh, yeah, I've already done that in Tahiti. I said, well, Shirley, it's a little different. And and she was amazed. They're that mm. much bigger. They're huge. Oh, oh. really? Yes. Hmm. And it, I, but I have to wonder, and how do you feel about this? Because part of me goes, you shouldn't be feeding, you shouldn't just like you shouldn't feed whales, and you shouldn't feel do- feel feed dolphins. And I kind of don't know how if you're supposed to really. I mean, I understand people to do it for tourism, but I don't hmm. really know if it's good to feed stingrays. I mean, I know it's good for tourism, but I don't know if it's good for the stingrays. I mean, well, to even like the, the manta ray too on the big on the island. big island. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are huge too. Yeah. Have you done that one? Yeah. Yeah. And they do the night fishing. Yeah. And night diving yeah. with those. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's fun. And, and you, you know, of course, there's photo opportunity. I think you took some pictures, too, on that, too, yes. didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And, and you did the aqua class, which I, st- I did twice. And I have to say, the aqua class on Celebrity. Have you done that ever, Kathy? I have not been on Celebrity. Oh, I'm surprised. I know. Okay. I'm really surprised you haven't. Because, yeah, I, that is... One day. <laughs> well, celebrity's great, but the Aqua Class Blue restaurant uh-huh. is is the best, and 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 they know you. They give you a different meal every night. You don't have to worry about. It. It's like a seventy or eighty seats. In the yes, room. yeah, and and um, so the restaurant is called Blue B L U, mm-hmm. and so the the advantage of that is when you book Aqua Class, only the Aqua Class passengers can go to Blue. Um, if you book a suite, you have your own separate restaurant, Lumine. So the the advantage is you can go to dinner anytime. Mm-hmm. No early seating. You can go at 6 o'clock. You can go 7.30 or 9 o'clock. And they get to really know you and what you want. Yes. And, and I must say the quality of the ingredients, you know, the vegetables, the, the fruit, the fish, the the beef, 
it is a much better, I feel, than in the main dining room. Mm -hmm. And also the service, because they know you. you they know, know they you. Get and to they, know yeah. you. And, yeah. and it's just just so pleasant. And, yeah. and it's just uh, so relaxing. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. That was one of the highlights. Doing I did the blue twice. And then you went to Cozumel, and you hadn't been to Cozumel before. Oh, have yes. To, oh, you we, have been to Cozumel have. before. Yes. Did you so, do any of the tours there? Um, no, we walked around because oh, okay. we Key West, we did a sale. And I didn't know that Key West has the third largest coral reef. I didn't either. I didn't know that. Because well, they got damaged by the hurricane. How, so how was that there? Well, the reef was not very impressive, to oh. be honest. They've yeah. had a lot of um, bleaching problems. Mm -hmm. Oh, and dear. Yes. And that day we went out, it was quite rough. Mm. You know, getting climbing the steps down, and we went snorkeling. And, I mean, we were, like, sloshing. I mean, it was mm -hmm. very rare. And you're rough. very used to being in the ocean and yes. on boats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's funny because I never have had any desire to go on a Caribbean cruise because I feel it's so similar to what we do here. Have you been on the Caribbean cruise? I've done a Bahama and I didn't care for it because, yeah. you know, we're we're Spoiled from Hawaii and, like, yeah. and we kept comparing it. And yeah, you can't help but compare yeah, it to but a degree. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. You know. And then you have this other adventure coming up, which this one is, uh, you've done this one, I think, before, but I don't think in exactly the same manner. You're leaving Friday leaving. to fly out, and I imagine on United. Uh, yes, on United, <laughs> and uh, actually, um, Fred and I celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Um, last week, I believe. Anyway, so... We are going to fly to Newark, and we will arrive 6, almost 7 a.m. on Saturday. So we're, we're taking the night flight. And then we will go to the Marriott Marquis, our favorite hotel there, Cindy. It's where, where we, we stayed, stay, yeah. In Times Square. It's huge. It is. It's, you've been there, right? It's twice. massive. I stayed there twice, yeah. Yeah, two Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many restaurants, lots of restaurants. And then hopefully we can take a nap because 2 o'clock we're going to the ballet at the Met uh, nice. to see Giselle. Oh, beautiful. And then at 6 o'clock we're going to have dinner with our friends Holly and Howard that just happened. They live part-time in Haiku. They will be in New York. So they said, let's get together. So we're going to have dinner at Frankie and Johnny's. I've never been there. And then we're going to see Carousel. Fun. Is that in Broadway? Yes. Right there, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then and it won't be freezing this time. No. It was pretty cold when we were there, remember? And Yes, and, and then nice. we'll be toast. <laughs> but the prices have gone up because it is not the winter season. The prices went up from when we stayed there, You right? mean for the hotel? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. we got a pretty good rate, plus it was, I think, a bit of a Grammy discount. But I think we paid two sixty a night. Yeah, now it's up to... Close to five hundred. Yeah, that's a that's a big difference with the taxes and you know that uh, resort fee. That resort fee, <laughs> always is, it's is always everybody's doing yes, it now. Even Las Vegas. I know it's it's thrown in there, and and sometimes you can negotiate with them and say you're not using resort. Can they waive it or give some reason? Sometimes they will waive it. They waived it they, for us. Yes, and that thanks time. to you, Cindy. Yeah. But but I've I've tried to negotiate that sometimes, and they just don't even. When I was going to Oahu and I wanted to spend the night, and they were going to do like a thirty-five dollar res resort fee, and I'm going, well, I'm only there for the night, and I don't have time to use a resort. Can you waive it? No, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. No. We never we never waive our resort fee. So I guess you kind of have to know. And and I don't know. Do you? I mean, travel agents sometimes don't even get the discounts that seniors get. I mean, sometimes in some of these places you don't get the discounts. I find there's better discounts for travel agents in Europe than there is sometimes here on in America. Do you find that, Kathy? Um, yeah, they because like in Europe they don't always have senior discounts like they do here. Oh, yeah. is that oh, okay? All right, because yeah, I've that. seen the senior discount can be. Sometimes better, equal. yeah, mm -hmm. or better, or exactly. Common, you know, yeah, depends. exactly, yeah. yeah. But um, so you're going to New York. You have a lovely, I think, sounds like exhausting, but a fantastic whirlwind day, and then you're off the next day to you fly on United again well, to. Well, Monaco? then on Sunday we're having brunch uh -huh. with Garrett. 
Oh, good. And then, oh, then uh, you've heard of Classified, that um, restaurant that United has. It's this, you have to be invited, and it's at no. Newark. So anyway, I got an invitation. From you know, on United? Yes. And probably because I'm 1K to um, dine at their they're classified it's the name of the Interesting. restaurant oh, i want to hear all about that <laughs> it's well, in the airport it's in the wow. airport and i i i've gone there before i was by myself because i was very curious and so you go to this restaurant you, you show up at at the specified time you need to make an appointment then they take you behind this restaurant off to the side and there, it's United's um, private restaurant. I mean, is you this know, a new thing? I think it's fairly new, uh-huh. maybe a couple of years. I mean, you told me about the one that American Express has, which was pretty. Oh, that's nice. a Centurion Lounge. The Centurion no, this Lounge. is totally different. So that was very nice. Yeah. So this, you have to be invited, and so then um, everything in Newark is off of the iPad. You know that, you know, every restaurant you go to, you need to order off of the iPad. So classified is like that. And when I went, um, that was last year, and I ordered, they have this breakfast sandwich with brioche and this bacon and, you know, and and I had coffee and, and you know, I was by myself. There was only one other person there. And then when it came time for the the bill I, I couldn't find it and so I asked the service I can't find the uh, the bill he said oh um, we're taking care of it I said well, oh, isn't that nice that was nice well yeah Is, are they gonna do that again oh yeah. I don't know they I don't I'm tell not, you huh? I'm not expecting it but that was a nice surprise very so, nice so after brunch then our flight leaves at 5 p.m. out of Newark so I made a 3.30 reservation for Fred and I. Okay, so you just go early and have a meal. Yes. You're going to eat well that day. You're going to have the, <laughs> the day before and brunch where you can have brunch. I, I'm not sure Garrett's going to oh, pick, pick the a place. place. Yeah, Yeah. then we're going to fly to Nice and go to the Monaco Grand Prix. Do you, does nice, nice has an international airport, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And our friends. You have friends in Nice. Live there, so they will be picking us up, and and so for people that you know are car and race enthusiasts, you know the Monaco Grand Prix is like you know. Oh, it's the the, the, the big deal. Yeah. The, the big deal, and so Fred and I actually went to the Monaco Grand Prix. I'm thinking about thirty five years ago, thirty four years. Oh, it's been that long. Yes. Oh, okay. And, uh, however, this way we're joining a group. It's called Moto Express, and they're based out of England. So it's very easy. We've taken six different um, trips with them to different races. Um, Motorcycle is the MotoGP and then the Formula One. So we've taken about six with them. So all you need to do is show up. And they book the hotel, they book the tickets for the race, they will transport you there, they have a welcome dinner, and Friday, uh, so Thursday we check in, and we'll be staying in St. Paul de Vence, and then we... That is an amazing town. We yes. went there before on a cruise, we were doing that cruise. Yes. It, that's a, have, this is a beautiful... Yeah. It's just, it's not that far from Monaco. No. Um, the bus ride from Monaco was about... An hour? Mm, depends on traffic. Yeah. yeah. But they're very tiny mm-hmm. roads. Yeah. Very, very yeah. tiny roads. And you wind. You wind and you wind mm-hmm. and you wind. I mean, I can't help but think of Princess Grace and those winding roads. and how, you know. But you wind around and there's this beautiful little jewel. Art town. Very, very, very fine art. There were artists, that famous artists that lived there, which kind of made it an art town. And you can see these amazing around these really lovely... I don't know. It's like Beverly Hills up in the hills of above Monaco. It's kind of like it's very, very nice. And there's lovely different private hotels. Yeah, little boutique hotels. Mm-hmm. We're staying at, at um, De Messigues. I'm, I'm probably butchering the name. And it has its own vineyard, a little one. Mm. And um, then we, so Thursday night is the welcome dinner. And then Friday, we get to go to Cannes. And then we get to walk the pit lane. So 
you know, we can see the cars and, and you know. Right down get, there. Yeah, yeah, right down there. And it's noisy. Yes. It's, They're loud. Yes. So Those then, cars are loud. Uh, yes, and, and that's what it's all about, Cindy. Yeah. It's, it's loud. It's, you feel the vibration. And you there's money, money, money. You smell the exhaust. Yeah, you and, smell the money. Well, and <laughs> it's and expensive. I'll never forget where Fred and I were sitting. We it was across what they call the pool, which is the harbor where the the most luxurious yachts are parked, and people are the beautiful people, and they've got the beautiful floral arrangements. They have their TV, they have their champagne, so they're watching the race. They got the TV, they've got the surf. I mean, it's pure decadence. Yes, and we're sitting maybe three rows and and all that's separating us from the the cars you know the formula 1 cars coming what 200 miles per hour is a chain link fence oh dear so i, I looked at fred i said fred <laughs> you know if if they hit this chain link mm-hmm. fence and we're here um we might die. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. yeah. And then, then you're kind of like, wow, this is exciting. <laughs> yeah, it you is. Know? The adrenaline. And and it's, you know, the only Formula One race that actually goes through the streets. Oh, yeah. Of, you know, Monaco. And, and, and the most expensive streets. I mean, they're at the, in Monaco, at the, there's the uh, casino. And the casino is famous for... The most expensive cars that park there. Yes. There was this funny story a few years back about an accident that happened. And one of the cars either got driven wrong or it lost its brake or something. And, and it hit like a Rolls Royce, a Lamborghini, a, a Ferrari, and like two other. I mean, the damage from just this little parking accident came to like $3 million, you know, because, yes. because the cars are that expensive there, you know. Um, but it is it is it's unbelievable. But... It's a it's a jewel box of a place. It really is a gorgeous. It's a very very gorgeous place, Monaco, and this is the big event. So and like everyone's really you know they they know everyone's going to be in town for it, and it's like a big 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 deal. So the group did they all sit together for the 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 car race as well? Are you all together in the group for the car race? Yes, we so are. So so, so they limit it to usually it's about forty people. Because depending um, on the bus, Mm -hmm. because they will transport us. So, you know, in the morning we have breakfast and they said, okay, 8.30 a.m. The bus will be leaving promptly. And if you're not there, uh, we will just assume you made other plans. And and they're very good. The um, John and Linda Sinker, who are the owners, they are Incredible attention to detail, the hotels that they pick, and then we get transported, and we, you know, where the buses can park. You know, we don't have to walk very far, and then we have uh, tickets in the grandstand, and you just. Where do you go to lunch? You just have places, little stands along the way. Yes, you yeah. just walk around and you know buy food and buy, of course, you know. See, now here the we'd be hot dogs, right, and, and mm-hmm. chili dogs. There it's like uh, you get your, your, your bread, right? Your, and your foie gras. Your foie gras, your cheese, your, cheese, your brie. And <laughs> Some you, wine. Yes, it's not <laughs> quite hot dogs, I don't think, uh, at Monaco for the Grand Prix races. You know, it's kind of amazing. Probably maybe crepes. There might be some crepe oh, places. Oh, there are. I mm-hmm. bet that, yeah. And, and so we're actually having um, uh, friends of ours that they live in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, Ted and Lynn. And that was on Ted's bucket list to go to the Monaco Grand Prix, you know, once in his lifetime. So they will be joining us. It's fun. Yes. It's going to be fun. So so you're there for how many days? Well, so we will will arrive Monday. What what date on Monday? That would be the 20... uh, Well, 18th is Friday. Yeah, 21st. 20th. Yeah. Yeah. And... And then we will... Because she's not good on Facebook like I, you are, I don't Kathy. do that. 21st. Yeah. 21st. And then <laughs> we, I mean, Kathy, you can just go and see everything oh, she's doing on Facebook. Yeah, and I, I get not pictures. Quite. I get pictures <laughs> from Kath, from you, but Christine's not like that. She doesn't post her pictures on I, Facebook. Yeah, and then uh, uh, we will be back on the 29th. Oh, okay. So what else are you doing after the Grand Prix? Uh, well, actually, before that, our friends are picking us Monday, and they're taking us, I believe, to Avignon for... Couple nights. Oh, Avignon's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, they, we just said 
Your friends from Nice are driving you. Yeah, they're driving us. Mm -hmm. I was there on that that cruise, and it's where the popes actually. There there was a split in the in the the whole Catholic Mm -hmm. thing, and part of the popes went down to France, and they stayed there in Avignon. And there's some lovely big buildings, and some are museums now, and some are still churches, and there's some parks around there. And I found it very interesting. It's it's a beautiful place. I don't remember. Yeah, there's a small little town that's nice. With a, a very charming little town, actually, there. Mm-hmm. So that, it's very, very lovely. So a couple nights yeah, there so will we'll, be So we'll be there Monday, Tuesday night. Then Wednesday, we'll, we'll come back to Nice and um, have dinner with Ted and Lynn because they're, they're coming in from Paris. So they're taking the train. And then Thursday, we go to St. Paul de Vence to our hotel. Which is lovely. And so you're in your hotel there for three nights? Uh, four nights. Thursday, Friday, oh. Saturday, Sunday. You know, and, and all of this you'd think would be thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. But actually, you got, a, you got a good deal on that trip with that group, didn't you? Yes. And not only that, but to plan everything, mm-hmm. to get the race tickets, to get the transportation, to know where to park. And, you know, it just takes a lot of time and research where with... You know, John and Linda Sinker, we just say, okay, sign us up. Just show up at the hotel. Okay, here's your tickets. You know, here, this is where we're going to go. And, and you just meet enthusiastic people, you know, and they're so nice from all over the world. So how much does it cost to do that with that group? Uh, it depends on the, the hotel you choose, but I would say roughly about 2500 Isn't that amazing? That's, that's cheap. For which that. is for the hotel, the meals, the transportation. Yeah. And the tickets. Tickets. Yeah. Now, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, really, if you know, the way you're talking, I mean, I would have guessed it would have been at least $6,000 for that because the, that's, that's per a, person. Per person. Yeah, yeah. but still, mm-hmm. that hotel, those hotels are very expensive. That's a very, very exclusive area. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, just getting around on the buses and let alone... I have no idea what tickets go for, but I would imagine tickets in those good seats are worth a lot of money. Yeah, you know what? I will have to check about tickets to the race because sometimes they're included and sometimes they're not. So Mm. I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. However, the just the assurance of knowing everything is taken care of. You know, Mm -hmm. you you don't have to worry. I mean, it is. It's thrilling. I I wonder how long. I don't don't remember. That's a pretty long race. It's 71 laps, I believe it was. It's a pretty, yeah, I remember it's for, compared to some races, it's a pretty long race. And just the fact that it, you know, I hope most people realize what this race is, but you go through the streets. Yeah, through the tunnel. You're literally going right through the the, the streets (laughs) of Monaco, you know. Um, so and it's such an amazing tradition there. It's such a it has such an amazing tradition. It's been going on for years. I don't remember how many years, but as long as I can remember, they've been having this race. And and there's so many almost all the favorite drivers, famous drivers, have driven this race. And um, it's got such a tradition to it that it is quite a thing to be able to go and see that. That's I mean that's an event of a lifetime to be able to go see the Monaco Grand Prix. Yes. Yeah, so when cool. when we went. 35 years ago, Alain Prost was the winner. So, um, well, I have a favorite driver. That's Lewis Hamilton, of course. We'll see how he does. <laughs> Are you going to be able to see his car and everything? Get oh, down of there course. Oh, yeah. Yes. These cars, I don't even know the you value of them. You look like a race car driver fan. She doesn't look like a race car driver <laughs> I would have never guessed. I wouldn't have either. <laughs> you know what? I, I was never a fan, and it wasn't until Fred, we went to the Monaco Grand Prix, and experiencing like the vibration the, the energy, smell yeah. the energy yeah. the noise the mm-hmm. excitement yeah. i mean just being so close to the cars I, and and really it's like fred i, I we like could die in my in another <laughs> lifetime I, I liked race cars i i knew sterling moss and i went to some of the races and stuff and it was like yeah it's pretty addicting actually it is it it's is. adrenaline it is it's to the max it is absolutely adrenaline to the max yeah and speaking of that they have very good coffee in france too get some yes. nice coffee there start out with your croissant oh. and your lovely coffee in the morning at your hotel and your lovely food that you'll have there I think this is going to be a great one. I'm very, very, very thrilled for you. I think uh, it's it's a wonderful experience. So you come back when? I'll be back the 29th. 
Tuesday? Is that Tuesday? Well, you know, we're going to have to have some pictures. You're going to have to send me pictures. You okay. know that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, because I want to see some of those race cars up close. And you've got to take some pictures of the cars going around the tracks. I know it's hard because you're going to have a fence in front of you, but still, you want to try to get some of those pictures for sure. Mm-hmm. Cannes, really, I think, you know, I've had a lot of debate on this, but I was, I was in Cannes before, actually, for almost a week or two. And I think it's pronounced can, but a lot of people call it con because they think it's going to be con. But can, of course, is famous for its film festival. Yes. That's one of the mm-hmm. top places in the world. And it's also a very exclusive, exclusive, beautiful, beautiful place. And lovely walking and parks and buildings and history there as well. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's quite an experience. Yeah, so we'll be there itself. Friday Yeah. before the pit lane. And then Walk. you go back where? You go back to Nice and leave from Nice again? Yes. And yeah, from nice. nice. And then fly to Munich. Oh, okay. And, Munich. And, yeah. And then Munich to SFO, San Francisco. Overnight then, in San Francisco? No. All the way. And San Francisco to Maui. That's a long haul. Yes. Did you get the upgrade? I did on the way back. Okay. Not going out. <laughs> Not yet. I'm oh, still waiting. Wow. I'm still waiting. And you say, listen, I just got this exclusive meal, and <laughs> the, the, you know, if you can give me the good meal, you can get me an upgrade, right? Uh, wow, because you, you'd like that. Of course, it's not so bad. From Newark to uh, Cannes was what eight hours? Eight hours. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight hours is yeah, bad. It's, nice it's nice breaking nice it up. That. And nice, nice. Well, at least the long haul back you have the upgrade. Right. Because we're nice doing it all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you stop in San Francisco, right? Yeah, for like two hours. <laughs> and you change planes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't have it all the way through yet. No. <laughs> you haven't gotten, haven't gotten there yet. Well, I mean, she's done it once again, Kathy. She comes up with these amazing trips. It's pretty, I mean, I never could keep up with her. I know. <laughs> I don't think we even talked about what happened. When I went, I don't know if I spoke to you when I came back. Um, you know, when I went with the grammar student in New York, mm-hmm. I came back, and then you went on. Yes. And you did that cruise that was amazing. Oh, yes. On that the was... Viking Ocean, the, the Viking oh, Star. Oh, yes, you did come and talk about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if you notice the ads now, you know, because we always love the Viking ads. Love the Viking ads. And now they're promoting not their river cruises. They're promoting their ocean cruises and saying, we got the awards for this, the awards for that. And so they're promoting a lot those ocean cruises now. Yeah, the my friend, my travel agent friends, they're so bad. They they are going on one in December, the same one you went on. Oh, they are. And they're like, oh, let's go, and I'm like, no, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> really? <laughs> Why? I I don't know. I, I I will. I I'm working on a new kitchen. So oh, that would <laughs> I could do have it. had a really nice kitchen that by now, would but do it. every time we, you know, but you know, something always comes up. But for it now, does I'm, always. I'm saying I'm staying put. Well, for a you did while. that amazing trip to Egypt, which yeah. was, uh, you know, that that's a that was a classic trip to Egypt. I've been emailing uh, Andrea Smith back and forth a bit. You know, mm-hmm. she's such a sweetheart. She's going to provide me artwork for my cover of my next CD. Oh, nice. It's yeah. going to be a place of peace, and she's going to let me use one of her pieces of art. She, she's just a, I, Andrea Smith is amazing. She's so fun to travel with. I'm sure she yeah. would be. <laughs> that lady knows how to live right and enjoy life, you know? Yeah. She really does. And, she has great taste, too. And she has all these little sayings. And I said... And I w- would write a few of them down. I go, you need to make a book and call them Andrea-isms. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She just, like, I, you know, I don't well, know. Well, she did a little book that called Lighten Up, Enlighten Up. I had up. that. Yeah. yeah that, mm-hmm. that was a great book. And I kept that for a long time. I don't know mm-hmm. when I moved. I don't know where it went. Yeah, but, I just saw it in my drawer the other day. But, but. no, she's, she's, she's an enlightened being for mm-hmm. sure. Absolutely. And I wish I could have. I mean, if I, I, if I went on that trip, I wish I had. I won't think I could have afforded another trip for a whole year after that because that was an expensive trip. That was a first class all the way, you know, absolutely. Well, um, we do want to mention before we close out here, we've got about a less, little less than five minutes, maybe about four minutes. But um, the big story, of course, is the royal wedding. And it's really good for tourism, talking about things that are good for tourism. We need a royal wedding here in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, but they took the queen away. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself on that one. But <laughs> <laughs> the royal wedding is huge. It's, you know, obviously the princess, uh, but Princess Meghan Markle, 
um, has really um, attracted worldwide attention, especially here in America. She's an American princess. And her gown, did you happen to see the gown? Mm -mm, It's a $135,000 gown, and it is fabulous. It is unbelievable. It's like an Erte drawing that is just (laughs) unbelievable. But we are going to do a special tomorrow morning on the air here. Um, From 7 to 8, a little bit of the prep stuff about the wedding. And then we will be broadcasting the wedding on Saturday at 7 o'clock. It happens like at 2 in the morning. So obviously we're not going to broadcast the wedding at 2 in the morning real time. So we're broadcasting it at 7 o'clock when you can wake up. (laughs) And it's going to be a two-hour broadcast with all the information and everything that happened with the royal wedding. And I think it's partly because, you know, there's been all these shows, there's been all this fascination with Victoria, and there's been The Crown. I don't know if any of you watched The Crown. I love The Crown, and there's been all these oh, there's been all these amazing shows about royalty. So there is this fascination we have with royalty, and this is like royalty brought into this day and age. And, um, you know, because Harry was always like kind of the wild one, and Meghan has... An interesting background herself being, you know, she was already divorced and she's three years older than men and she's, uh, you know, mixed. And so there, it's like everyone's going, wow, this is the new royalty and this is what we really embrace. And there's a lot of discussion because the father of the bride first was not going to come and then he was going to come. And now he's not going to come because they said it was a heart attack. And, and now they're saying on top of that that he's going to have surgery. But... But it, they, they eat this up. They love this kind of news, and it's been all over everywhere about the wedding. So you can be sure that that London is packed to the gills with people, and London is not a cheap place to go anyway. So you know there's a ton of money coming in to see this one. It is like everyone is talking about this I thing. wonder how many Americans are going. I am too, I'm very curious as well, but I bet you a bunch because uh, – you know, there's a lot of the New York connection, and she knows a lot of stars as well. She she has a lot of um, movie star friends and stuff. So there's huge, there's huge, huge interest, and that kind of thing does draw attention, and it's always good for for their tourism and everything. So uh, we'll be keeping our eyes and ears open on this one um, because maybe more ears on the radio. <laughs> they actually have eyes. clients there right now. They weren't going for that, but. Oh my gosh! Yeah, they, they weren't just, going they for that. They just got in today. Oh, you'll have. To, I would have. And ha- I think they leave sun- Saturday. Oh <laughs> gosh! I mean, can you imagine leaving the day? Of oh, the I have to tell you the story about these clients yeah. real quickly. So they were in Israel when um, when the bombing. Oh. They were in the Golan Heights. No, and they. Um, they could hear the bombing wow. of that yeah. thing. So then they had called me, and um, they wanted to leave the next day. And then so I got them out. Then the next day and then I guess the husband decided no we're going to stay so then I had to change it back uh-huh. and they stayed and they just left yesterday oh we have we have to have them so come they're, in yeah they did a really they did uh, London Paris Germany Italy and then they did an Israel tour oh my gosh so how fabulous yeah, so, well good for them staying yeah. because again I mean it was a terrible one and there were 50 mm-hmm. people we were just talking about this before we came in with David Corson. And and we were saying, you know, it's just like when you hear about the Big Island, there's 10 miles affected there, but everyone in the world thinks the whole world's coming apart, but, you know, you can stay and be fine. So it, it is a matter of keeping your head straight and not getting panicked, you know, when, if you don't need to. But we would love to have them to come in. Um, we're just about running out of time. I want to thank you, Christine, for coming. And you, you always do. something you wanted to oh, share. Oh, I just wanted to say <laughs> yes. I saw Of Mice and Men at EL Theater on Sunday for Mother's Day. And it was unbelievable. Yes. Great unbelievable. acting. Unbelievable. Great really acting. We're so lucky incredible. to have people who act like just that. Just wanted to yes, say thank that. You. And Kathy Takushi, 244-1414. Can help you even if you want to call all the way from Golan Heights and get out in time and change your mind and stay instead. <laughs> oh gosh. Which is, it's like emergency. Get me out. No. We no, change our mind gonna, and stay. We're stay. <laughs> <laughs> just remember you can change your mind and do that if you have a travel agent. <laughs> Thanks so much and we'll talk to you next week here. Aloha. Oh, that must have been crazy. Yeah. Health officials are confirming a new case of mumps on Maui. The State Department of Health said the infected patient had recently traveled to Oahu, which has seen the most amount of cases over the past year.